Hello and welcome to another episode of Triton Nation Podcast, presented by the Pacifica Athletic Network. I'm your host, Brandon Gonzalez, Director of Athletics and Student Life at Pacific Christian High School. I'm here with co-host Jeff Bearcoff. Hey. Um, what's up, Jeff? And this week's guest, we're excited uh, to have the uh, GSAT Commissioner, Mike Mike Daniels. Say your last name right? I don't, I always mess up last names. So I gotta That's get correct, that right. Yeah. Mike, thank you for being here. Yep. Thanks um, for having me. Mike, you have an impressive career as an administrator. Um, not just you know working within the GSAC, but you've been there eight years at the GSAC, according mm-hmm. to my notes. But you also spent uh, what, about fourteen years in the Big West Conference. Yes. That that must have been a fun uh, you know journey as well. Um, working at the Big West. You oversee 10 different institutions, or you work with, I should say, in partnership with 10 different institutions um, across two states, 17 different collegiate sports. Uh, you sound like a very busy man, uh, <laughs> especially during a pandemic. Um, so I thank you for taking the time to be here um, on our show. No problem. Um, you know, Mike, so we're meeting for the first time. Jeff's meeting you for the first time. You and Mariah have a little bit of a history together, so we're mm-hmm. grateful she she was able to invite you on. But tell us a little about yourself, our viewers, our listeners. Um, I'd love to get to know you more too. Put you on the spot. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you've you've got my resume in front of you there. I do. Um, I've I've been at all levels: uh, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA. Um, you have half of what I'm doing now of of the GSAC, which is my main job, but I actually oversee a. Uh, NCAA Division One Water Polo Conference oh, as really? well. So I have my hands in in the NCAA still and in the NAIA, but the NAIA is my main job, the Golden okay. State Athletic Conference. That's my main job. So um, it, it was interesting. Bob Wilson, who is the former Vanguard Athletic Director, mm-hmm. um, reached out to me, and this is my ninth year, so eighth year, ninth year into the league, um, reached out to me and said, hey, we're looking for a new commissioner. Um, and I, all my experience had been NCAA before. It okay. was all mostly Division One in the Big West, but didn't know much about the NAIA whatsoever. Hmm. And uh, But it was interesting, an interesting opportunity. And it was local. I didn't have to move. Uh, my wife's a teacher in Irvine. Okay. And so we didn't want to move. Both our moms are local as well. Um, so my kids like the Southern California. I'm a Southern California boy. I've, I've, I've been here most of my life, except for a little bit brief time in, in Colorado. Ooh, um, it's cold. So, <laughs> when, so when he approached me and then Dave Berline, the, the Concordia Athletic Director, who both have since moved on. Bob's obviously retired. Um, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And um, interested in, and love what the conference stands for. Mm. Um, so leaving Division I uh, and going to the NAI sometimes is a big jump um, from a career standpoint, yeah. uh, especially when you're in the Division One circles. But, uh, but I've, I've loved it. I've loved everything that, that I've done since I've been here. Where did your start in maybe collegiate athletics take place, or, or, or <laughs> it, yeah, where did that? Where's that? It's a funny start? story now that the the world will hear. Uh, when I was, I went to school at Kennedy High School uh, okay. here, and I, I played soccer and basketball and track. And I was going to go to school at UC San Diego. That was my undergrad, and they're a quarter school, so they start in late September. Yeah. Well. Um, when I go and step foot on campus, I said, I'm going to go out for the soccer team. I played soccer in high school, and uh, I'm going to go out for the soccer team. Well, they were a month into the season. I knew nothing about college athletics <laughs> whatsoever. My parents, you know, didn't know anything about it. it no indication whatsoever. So I go, and I, they're a month in. Well, I can't play. And to add, they were coming off an appearance in the national championship huh. at the Division three level. So I said, well... I'm not going to play soccer. I'll go out for track because I was a hurdler in high school. And so went to the first track meeting, and they said, hey, we're going to start practice in October, first week of October. And I said, track season's not until February. You know, I was <laughs> I, th- I played three sports in high school. You know, you're, you're going from sport to sport. I'm not practicing track in October. So I said, okay, well, I'll go out. You know, this is what college is all about. Again, it goes clueless on, on what a college athlete does. Went out to the hurdles, didn't realize that they raise them in college. <laughs> and you know, I'm, you can't see, but I'm, I'm 5'10". Uh, hurdler is not under six feet. I mean, most of them are 6'2", six 6'4". Six they got the long legs. That's not me. So hurdling wasn't going to be my uh, repertoire in, in, <laughs> in college. So then I just went and said, well, if I can't play, I'll go and work in the athletic department. And okay. Started doing like public address announcing and play-by-play for baseball games and 
then it just snowballed. I mean, we could go on all day. Yeah. About, but that that's the start of being embarrassed of not knowing which college athlete athletes do and what it's all about and And that and now i'm a commissioner and that pushed you in that direction so (laughs) hey so mariah i'm gonna call on you your is your goal to be a commissioner someday yeah why not sounds fun because you spent time at gsac right (laughs) i did yeah i was an intern that for them for about a year um and i had a really awesome time just learning under mike and um lucas armstrong i spent a lot of time with them too kind of seeing how they both worked in um from a conference standpoint rather than just a single school so it's really awesome experience off the record mike how was she we were trying to groom mariah <laughs> to work and you guys stole her from us and this is a great opportunity for her which is which is good but we were trying to groom to take over at lucas's i mean he's a great assistant but he's got to move on at some point as well yeah whether that take my job if i I move on or or just a further for him so mariah we're trying to get to get to that point maybe she still can i mean this this is oh. good so which she's great mariah, mariah she is, is great. very talented maybe jeff melton at vanguard will move over <laughs> yeah, he can come, come work with we you guys push side. Jeff to the side. We'll, yeah. we'll keep mariah here um okay well let's let's jump into it it's thank you for sharing a little bit um but so i'm curious to know as the commissioner of the you know a college conference a collegiate conference your know, gsac what is like kind of your primary role or responsibility in supporting your member institutions during this pandemic. Uh, How have you guys helped them with onboarding student athletes with things like extended eligibility? Uh, You know, what does that look like for you guys right Uh, now? It's very difficult during this time as it is for everybody. Um, What what my main job honestly right now is sending out test kits to game officials and doing schedule changes. I mean, that's, that's all I spend my time with. Once I get off this podcast, that's what I'll be doing. I'll go go home, go to the office, and, and send stuff out. Um, the changes that are occurring from a schedule standpoint takes everybody's time, and and the coaches and the athletic directors, um, it, that that's what they're spending their time on because there's so many cancellations. Yeah. Whether it be COVID, whether it be opponent, what have you. Um, I wish I could get to some of those other things um, of actually trying to help future student athletes. Hmm. The challenge is going to be a lot for freshmen this year um, coming in. And I know Rhett was on your uh, podcast a couple weeks ago and and talking about this as well, is that um, they don't even know what they're going to do because all the current student athletes got their year back. Yeah. So they get to extend their time. Now, a lot of them, especially the seniors, probably aren't going to. Hmm. A majority of those, from what I've heard from our schools, are – they're ready to move on in life. Yeah. And, and you all know is like there's not full rides at the NAI level. Yeah. There are very few full rides. So you're paying a lot of money to go to school. Yeah. You don't want to have to keep paying yeah. that. Cal grants so, run out. Things run out. For yeah. sure. So so those seniors will move on, but there's still a lot of junior, sophomores, current freshmen that will stay, and that's going to impact next year's class and the year after this isn't a one-year problem. It's multiple-year problems, and how those coaches are going to manage their rosters. Again, Rhett said he doesn't even know what he's going to do yet. It's, yeah. it's very hard. So, trying to give some advice to, and, and I've got a junior. My oldest is a junior in high school, so I'm I'm a year removed from this. But then mm-hmm. I'm going to be in it as well as he goes off to college. Um, but trying to advise those seniors, it's. The biggest thing that we can do and we've tried to do is just open doors for the NAIA schools. Gotcha. As you know, and you probably have this uh, uh, high schools throughout the country, and especially out here in the West, you don't know a lot about the NAIA. Mm-hmm. It's all NCAA. It's D1. Get that D1 scholarship. Well, there's a lot of opportunities at Division II, and there's a lot of opportunities at NAIA. Yeah. And so our goal is to at least recognize and tell student athletes at the high school level look at a vanguard look at a westmont look at a hope international william jessup up north i mean whoever it might be in the gsac there's a lot of opportunities here hmm. yeah do, do, so you, does all scheduling you know the high school level scheduling really is just school to school mm-hmm. um at, at the collegiate level does it all have to run through gsac for approval or is it just or is that just conference games maybe or how conference that? games t- in a typical year yeah it's conference games okay. we set the conference schedule and then schools do their own non-conference now commissioners across the country are happy to help each other out okay. of hey do you want a non-conference series a challenge we, we're gotcha. happy to kind do of that. brand it some way yeah. but our goal is to do the conference schedule this year though everything has to be approved through us because there's a whole process that goes involved with testing mm. 
for game officials. It's not even the teams, it's the game officials. So we've got to test all the game officials. We have all the kits. And there's a, it takes about a week and a half to get that process done, huh. um, to send to the lab, to confirm, all that stuff. So all schedules have to go through us this year. It's not a typical year. Though. I wonder why you're so busy with all yeah. the scheduling. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, what, so I guess I'll piggyback off that a little bit. How then, how are, how are, how is the GZAC managing multiple seasons, it seems like, or seasons being moved? And, and do you have the final say in that? Or is that like an NAI decision? We came up with a strategy, and it's it's not just myself and Lucas. It's it's our athletic directors and our presidents as well. Um, we came up with a strategy to try to put all the games spread throughout the week. So typically you're playing your college games, whatever the season it might be, whether it's soccer, basketball, baseball, it's Thursday through Saturday. Yeah. We don't play Sundays. It's very rare we play Sundays if it's a rain out or what have you. But Thursday through Saturday makes up your schedule. So our goal was let, if we're going to have all these sports going on at the same time, Let's play some on Tuesday, some on Wednesday, some on Thursday, some on Friday to spread it out and not impact our typical spring sports, which is baseball, softball, mm -hmm. uh, men's volleyball is considered a spring sport, so the winter a little bit too, beach volleyball that we have. Um, let's not try to impact them since they had their seasons cut short already. Yeah. So basketball is going to be done here pretty soon, another couple weeks. And is they, NAI having a national tournament? There, is, There's yeah, okay. national tournaments at the NAI level for all sports. They recently announced they can't do a swimming one because the um, swimming and diving site uh, couldn't, couldn't hold hmm. the championship, and so they had to cancel that one. But the rest they are planning on, on doing, which is different than at the NCAA level. Yeah. Because yeah. they have already canceled their fall sports at Division Two, and yeah. Division Three just canceled winter sports. Oh, so. okay. And then the I championships. Know, and I know conferences are doing their own thing as well at that level. Mm -hmm. you know, like the Ivy League shut down all sports, yep. I think. Right. Yep. Um, so, so how many sports did you guys have to move to the spring? Well, uh, all of them. All of them. So did any take place in the fall? Uh, was it the country? only thing we had is a cross country championship, and okay. that's because of those athletes, those distance runners, don't want to do indoor, outdoor track, and cross country at mm. the same time. So we did successfully com uh, complete our cross-country championship up at William Jessup. Um, everybody was masked, except for at the race time. The student-athletes took their masks off. They ran. It, it was a great event. Good. Fans that came were on the outside because it was an outdoor deal. Yeah, yeah. But they were separated, didn't get by anyone whatsoever. So, I mean, it, it was good. But everything else is now in the winter slash spring. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Jeff, I think you had some comments. Yeah, Mike. Cast a vision. I know it's hard, but cast a vision maybe the next five to ten years. Where does the GSAC go? Um, do you have any big dreams for the GSAC? Uh, <laughs> I know it's tough. Especially it's, coming out of a pandemic, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, yeah, you asked me that question a year ago. It's probably a different <laughs> answer. Um, huh. I think a lot of our schools are going to have to look at how they're spending their money. And they, and they do that already, especially at the NAIA level. But um, will they look to schedule more um, with local than try to go and chase games. And, and, and part of the challenge is, is we're really good in the GSAC. I mean, you both know your, your products of mm -hmm. the GSAC, and, and, and we're really good. And so you have to go get some of those games for strength of schedule. And all of the NAI is moving to selection committees now. So that's even more important, strength of schedule, strength of schedule. And that's hard out here in the West. Mm -hmm. It's hard for NCAA Division One as well. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's the West Coast bias that we know of it's hard for the UCLA's and, and the Pepperdine's and the, any Big West school, UC Irvine, what have you. Um, but it, it even more so in the NAI because it's so Midwest driven uh, as an organization. Um, so one, how do we manage that? How do we try to watch cost containment and still try to get quality games? Um, that That's a tough thing. Um, one of the goals that we've had recently and, and to try to bring awareness of the NAI out here is to bring national championships. So mm. we currently host the men's soccer national championship. We won't this spring because of a schedule conflict with the with the park, but we've used OC Great Park yeah. um, as the venue. Uh, we'll do it in the fall. We're, that's our the fourth um, year of the contract. Um, so we'll do that. And that's to bring awareness to the local community. Um, and local uh, student athletes that are in high school. Yeah. Hey, the, this the NAI. Oh, you can play a national championship. Yeah, yeah. Great it's venue here. too. It, it, yep. Yeah. Um, we're trying to do it for beach volleyball. Beach volleyball is a brand new sport at the NAI level, mm. and so we're trying to bring the beach volleyball national championship because we're the first conference to have beach volleyball in the NAI. Huh. We, we were announced. Us and the Sun Conference came shortly after us. 
Um, but we're trying to lead the charge for, for that sport. You know it's big um, at the junior college level, and I know CIF just announced they that did. Uh, did. beach volleyball is now going to be an official sport at the high school level. Yeah. So that pipeline is going to be really good for us too yeah the best sand in the country is in southern california <laughs> so, uh. yeah. well uh, i i would probably say the maui sand is probably pretty good too so i don't want to slight hawaii okay. at all but uh but yeah we're probably second yeah. for sure um but uh so those are some of the things to try to bring awareness um we've got things going with our champions of character committee um our idea committee which is our diversity committee to try to engage um, kind of so, that social injustice. Um, those are things that are going to be big platforms for us um, in the GSAC moving forward the next five, ten years. Um, but I think from a membership standpoint, can we hold on to all our members? Can we not have any more members go to the Division Two? You know, yeah. we, we recently lost Biola and Concordia, and, and, the, and those were tough losses for us. Um, but we want to hold on to everybody and keep them in the NAIA. And, and how do we do that and, and make it successful for them? Yeah, what, what is the criteria to get into the GSAC? Because I know you see so many, and maybe you, you can only answer it you know, so far, but now there's so many schools popping up with St. Catharines and Westcliff. And, yep. I mean, I, you had, I think, Shepherd University was around at one point and fell apart. Mm -hmm. Like, I've, I've, I feel you, you guys want to be very selective in making sure the right schools are coming in who are mission fit. Um, for the GSAC, but what does that look like a little bit? It's definitely process? a conversation with those prospective schools. Uh, the GSAC has been, throughout its history, a faith-based conference. Yeah. Uh, when we went outside of that and added Menlo, Menlo was a good fit because of their character-driven athletics, of, of the focus that they have on that. Um, and it made sense for us, it, and it still makes sense for us. So I think because we've opened that window, we've opened to maybe some other schools that aren't faith-based, but primarily it's a faith-based conference. So, so that's one for our presidents they have to consider. Mm, okay, what, what's their mission? Yeah. You know, if, it's, if it's not faith, is it character-driven? Um, two, I, I think for schools that are coming in, they have to know how successful the GSEC is. Mm. Um, it's not an easy conference to play. So some schools are going to make the decision to not go to the GSAC and go to our other conferences out here, the CalPAC, um, because they think they have a better path yeah. uh, at success. It's tough when you're going against traditional powers of Westmont, Vanguard, the Masters, Hope International in men's basketball, and a little bit in women's basketball and some other sports now too, baseball. Their baseball team went to uh, the College World Series a few years ago. You, it's not an easy night off, yeah. and even it, and William Jessup has come in the fold, and they're pretty good at a, a few sports here. I mean, they they're tied for the lead in in one of our. Isn't sports that where right your now. buddy coaches on the yeah, girl her, side? Hernando Planels is the now the women's head coach. Good good friend of my brother and I. Her, Hernando is the lead of our diversity committee. Ah, ID great committee. So yeah, just coming he's over. He's the best. He's new. Yeah, yeah. He's a great great yeah. guy. Came from Duke, right? Yep. Over, we'll yep. get him on the show. Hernando, he, he love up. you, buddy. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> But I think so it's it's a conversation to have because are you ready to come into a conference where you're going to be having a battle every night in every sport? There's there's no off times. I mean, our, our women's basketball last year, we had three of the top seven programs in the country. Wow. Um, Westmont was the number one going into the tournament. They were number one coming into this year. Um, the tournament wasn't played, obviously, the national tournament. Men's basketball, baseball, softball. I mean, I know I'm doing disservice of sports. Tennis, we have teams yeah. ranked in every single sport, and not all conferences can say that. So that conversation that you have is, one, okay, can you follow the mission? But, two, can you compete? Yeah. you don't want to go over. I mean, that's, right. yeah. you just don't want to, It's it's and it's tough. Yeah. No, it, it, it makes sense. Um, yeah, I remember playing playing soccer at Biola. I remember one year the fine the NAI national tournament, the final four <laughs> was APU, Fresno and Concordia. Uh, it was like it should have just been that played out here. But yes, all those schools perfect. had to travel to, you know, Alabama or wherever it was, um yep. to, to do that. We've had that in women's volleyball. Uh we had a couple of years ago two Two semifinalists that played each other, Hope and Westmont, in the men's basketball semifinals. So we knew one was going to play, be playing in the yeah. national championship game. Um, I, I said women's basketball already. It's yeah, it's it's tough. So Mike, what I'm hearing is the GSAC is the number one conference in the country. I I actually <laughs> say that the GSAC is the SEC of the NAI. All right. Yeah, we we have a a streak 
that for 20, I think we're on 21 straight years, we've had a national champion in some sport. Wow. Could be a swimmer, could be a cross-country runner that won mm. it, could be a team sport. But for 20, and I think it might be on 21 straight years, we've had a national champion. So, so yeah, we're, we're very good. So when Mariah becomes commissioner, that streak better be intact. Yes, yes. That, my yeah, whole Mariah, goal, no pressure over there. <laughs> my whole goal is to continue that streak. Until, now, this year is going to be tough. Um, but I mean, even last year we had, we had a national champion in, uh, in an indoor track uh, athlete. So, Hmm. um, this, this year might be tough with, with the way the pandemic is, but, um, that's quite impressive though. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's, it sounds like you're doing incredible work. It sounds like you're a very busy man. Um, but as we kind of are getting towards our, our mark, what's, I mean, what's a, a memory you have of being at a GSAC that you, you walk away with you, maybe you're proud of something you've accomplished, something you've done. That you want people to like, kind of remember maybe you buy and the GSAC buy more importantly. I, I don't think I don't think that's my place to have people remember me. It's not yeah. about me. It, it's about our schools. It's about our coaches, our student athletes for sure. Um, they're they're what make up the GSAC. I just manage it. it it's not about me. Um, there are some things that we've done as a conference. Um, our, we've created the Champions of Character Award um, to honor our former commissioner, Cliff Hamlow, who, mm. who was the first commissioner and only until me um, of the GSAC. And uh, he's, he was helping to start the Champions of Character in the NAIA. So we honor two student athletes. It's the best thing we probably do. Um, and it's not me. It's, it's our schools um, that they honor a male and female student athlete every year um, with a character award. It has nothing to do about the points per game they're scoring or goalie saves as Mariah used to be the goalie at, at Vanguard um, that she made. It's all about stuff off the field um, or off, off the court. Um, so that's, that's something that's, that's near and dear to me. Um, but it's, again, that's not me. That that's a, a reflection of the, the student athletes that we have. Hmm. Um, our diversity committee that we formed this year. Um, and we're just getting started with that. Um, that I, and with Hernando, I'm right, right. interested to see what direction he takes it. Um, but that's going to be an important, important thing as well. Um, and then just getting our student athletes involved. We've we've tried to have a student athlete advisory committee. It's it's very commonplace in NCAA, not so much in the NAIA until mm -hmm. recent. Um, we formed one. We have a very good committee this year. Um, student athletes that are engaged and want to make a difference. This um, we're doing a mental health project uh, yeah. right now. Um, over the course of a couple weeks um, that's talking about mental health. That's and important. They've taken mm -hmm. over that. So, it, again, I think those are the things, but it, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. I think that's the legacy you're going to live. You've been humbled, a very humble man yeah. leading leading the GSAC. Um, I, we typically don't do this, but do you have any questions for us about Pacifica or any, what we have going I mean, we stole Mariah. You know, she's very involved with <laughs> us. Like, yeah. um, I think we have a lot to learn from you, but, um, I was, yeah, we're I, I think for me, and it's for, for you guys, what you're doing here, um, or even just high schools in general, of, of trying to, what are you doing to point NAIA? Mm. What are, instead of just NCAA? Yeah. Um, and, and I see it with the, the school, my high school, that my son goes to right now. I mean, it's, it's all about getting that NCAA scholarship. It's yeah. not about NAIA necessarily. Um, and Randy Dodge, who is the Vanguard yeah. soccer coach, he coaches at the high school. He's, he's the high school coach. Down at Lisa. Lisa Miguel, yeah. yeah. So there's a little bit of a connection there. But I think that's my question for you all of, of yeah. what do you do to make the NAIA or GSEC schools more aware for your students? Well, I'll, I'll answer, and then, you know, Jeff, if you have more, more thoughts on it. I think for me what it's important at Pacifica and when, within our athletic department is there's a place for someone everywhere. And like, and this idea that maybe why I have, and I've said it before on our show, my biggest kind of contention with the club world is they're so focused on that D1 product. Mm -hmm. They're so focused, especially at the, you know, top AAU world for basketball or ECNL for soccer or whatever, that the, their measures based off that D1 spot. How many kids can we say are going D1? And, you know, at Pacifica, yes, if you have a desire or goal to play D1, we'll help you get there. But there's also a spot at Westmont or a Vanguard, um, or Marymount. Like we, we've sent a lot of our athletes actually to play in the NAIA. Um, we have, you know, from our, our just basketball team, he has two players that play one at Vanguard, one at Westmont. Last night. Yeah. They, they, Timmy Bahador at Vanguard, Salman Davis at Westmont. Yeah. Um, we and have, what's great is we have that last night and then tomorrow night we have Judah Brown basketball player playing at St. Mary's. So mm -hmm. 
all levels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I think it's important for people to understand, like, it's it's not so much about the D1 thing. It, college is what you make it, and let's find you the best fit. If you want a small school liberal arts experience, a community that's going to know you, coaches that are going to know you by name, then let's find that place for you. Um, if it is a, a small NAIA school, then that's going to be the great fit. And and you know, on the I coach girls soccer with Mariah, and we have girls at Marymount, Westmont, Vanguard. I think are the three right now, just on the West Coast that are at NAIA, and they're having a blast, mm-hmm. and they're playing, and they're being impactful in their community. So. I don't try to get – and what I like about our athletic department is our coaches aren't bent on that either. It's not just about D1. It's not even just about NCAA. It's about what's the best fit for you. Where are you going to thrive? Where are you going to have the, the best holistic approach to growing and learning and honestly becoming the individual God has intended you to be um, because it's not always D1. And that's – so I don't know if that answers that question a little bit, but we, we focus more on the experience and college as being like a place that you can make it your own not i mean jeff we, i agree with you i think fit yeah. is absolutely the most important thing your fit and your experience because it's not you want to love where you're at and love what you're doing and sometimes that's really underrated and a lot of a lot of kids go to the wrong schools and don't love it and they have to transfer to the right school and um, the experience and the fit is i absolutely agree is, is most important for these kids what can the gsec do to help that conversation open open up the door is there things that our schools can do that they're not doing right now i mean you Mm. guys as a a private school probably have that connection you have a connection obviously with vanguard already but um what what can we do or what can our schools do what's the message i can take back that's a great question you know obviously these the student athletes now are all over social media so I, I'm not in that world as far as analytics of social media, but I would say no, because you're my age. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Say, I, yeah, we're not there. <laughs> yeah, I would say getting in front, getting in front of these high school kids, social media, uh, marketing campaigns, videos, probably things already going on. But that's mm-hmm. the first thing that comes to my mind uh, for these kids who are all over social media. Yeah, yeah. I think social media is. You know, we've we've been a big push in that at Pacifica just to brand our school and hopefully attract the right mission fit families and students, you know, for that. I think I, what I, what I would be curious to know, is there a way to get GSAC um, as a whole more involved? If it's through your student council, if you have that involved on campuses of like-minded institutions that have the best, best way of attracting like those students. So like we held for four or five years, a kind of a college volleyball showcase that was mm-hmm. geared towards small private liberal arts schools in the area, Soka, um, I mean, they don't have volleyball, but we invited them anyways because right. they have soccer, but Vanguard and, and Westmont, those schools, Providence came out because I think there's a, you know, just staying in the volleyball world, There, you go to, these kids are playing volleyball, club volleyball, they go to a tournament and there's a hundred colleges there, but all those kids are fixated on, oh, there's UCLA or there's <laughs> USC yes. or there's so-and-so. And then the Vanguards and the Providences and the schools that, uh, you know, Life Pacific, who my, my niece plays there, and she's loving it. You know, mm-hmm. a newer school. I think they're in the GSAC now yes. officially. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, they go, and those coaches get overlooked. But if there's a way to get attract those kind of students um, at a Pacifica or a CVCS or a school that maybe those kids are playing club, but th- th- your coaches are getting overlooked by the bigger D1 schools, I think that might be a – something either through your student advisory council or just getting more boots on the, boots on the ground mm-hmm. with some of these schools. Um, now again, that takes time and manpower. We're in a COVID pandemic. You can't really do anything. But <laughs> um, Well, and I know the NAI had a showcase series, and Vanguard actually hosted one in basketball. Well, this is probably three, four years ago. And softball, I believe they did, and maybe even baseball, hmm. um, that was trying to showcase the word. Um, hmm all the NAI schools yeah. and so they would invite those but I don't know how successful it is because most of those showcase events are different parts of the country yeah. it's not out here I'd be West, curious so. to talk with you more if maybe Pacifica can partner with GSAC and host a showcase mm-hmm. you know and invite some local it could be for different sports and we reach out and invite your conference schools their yep. head coaches or assistants Pacifica will host it we can brand it and they can you know we could start getting like-minded high school students in front of some of your your schools and GSAC. I think that's something that's a great idea. I think we could do that and even include the CalPAC as well. Yeah. Don yeah. Ott, their commissioner, is 
you know, he's got quite a, a challenge with his schools. He's spread the same geography as I yeah. am, so we, we share a lot of those the same things. Um, but I know he'd probably be interested as well. We would love to, to, to open up that door. And he's got an NCA back. Deal is done right here. Yeah. Yes, right on, here on Triton Nation. <laughs> we will keep an eye out for that. We are going to host a CalPAC GSAC college showcase yep. sometime in you know when this whole pandemic is over um but mike thank you for being here thank you for your time thank you yes, thanks um, for having me. this is a ton of fun i learned so much in such a short period of time uh thank you to our listeners thank you mark our producer mariah our sports information director uh please subscribe on our youtube channel oh thank you to trilogy financial for letting us use their studio we're very appreciative to them um follow us on youtube subscribe like us on social media check out our athletic website pacificathletics.org uh, until next time, guys, have a great week.